Welcome to today's webinar. The topic today is introduction to RFM6 interface with Grasshopper. My name is Andreas Hörold. I'm responsible for yeah, marketing and public relations in the company Dluba Software. For instance, the Dluba website, German and English webinars, newsletters, and so on. I will be the moderator today, and I will answer your questions together yeah, with Lukas Sühne. Yeah, but my two colleagues can introduce themselves. Hello, my name is Lukas. I'm working here as product engineer and customer support engineer with the focus on the interfaces. And as Andrea said, I will answer your questions today. Hello, my name is Paul Sivorgin. I'm working as a working student at Luba Software. I support the product development in the area of interfaces. And today I'm going to give you the introduction into the Grasshopper interface. Okay, thank you for your introduction. Then we can switch off our webcams so that the attendees can see the full screen. I say something, yeah, how you can ask questions, at least for the attendees who participate the first time. You can show that control panel yeah, that you can see on the right side of your screen with that arrow here, and then you can enter the question here. You can also email your questions to info at lubal.com after the webinar, and then you will get an email afterwards. Okay, then I hand over the screen to Paul. Paul, it's your turn. Do you see my screen? Yes. 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 Okay. So okay. Start with the presentation. Um. Let's first let's have a look at the schedule for today. Uh, first, I like to start with an update on the latest implementation we developed for the Grasshopper interface. And then I like to show some basic information about the installation and the interface itself. And after that, we create a basic geometry in Grasshopper and define all necessary model and load data and export it to Orphan. So what are the new features we have implemented in the last time? Um, first, uh, with, when we're using the member component, we can now assign existing design properties to the member for steel and timber design. And these properties are not defined in Grasshopper directly, but we can read them from a template in Orphan. And we have also new components for the definition of imperfections and at the request of a customer, non-linearities were also implemented in the line hinge component. And the next new features are that it's now possible to access the templates in Orphan via the export component. So for example, we can now define dimension design properties for steel and timber in a template in Orphan. And these designed, uh, this def defined design properties, we can um, access with the member component in Grasshopper. And also the export of the polylines has been optimized and we implemented the new components for closing and opening FM files, FM files in Grasshopper. Now I will give you a short information about the installation. The interface is not automatically installed. The installation must be done manually. Means with the installation of Orphan 6, you will receive a setup file, which is stored in the folder shown in this image. And you need to run the file and the plugin will be installed for Rhino and Grasshopper. In addition, we uh, need to, in addition, in, in addition, the web services must be activated in the Orphan program options so that the connection between Orphan and Grasshopper is can be established. Yeah, and after the installation, we installed two plugins. 
one pl plugin for the Rhino Orphan link. With this plugin, we can import and ex export data between Rhino and Orphan. We can import and export lines and surfaces, and this is limited to the pure geometry. So information about the sections or material thicknesses are not exported with this link. And in this webinar, we will show you the Grasshopper Orphan link. We have the import and export option as well, with the focus on the export to Orphan components. And the import works in such a way that we are able to read the information defined in Orphan and use it further in Grasshopper. We can export modal data like sections, member, thicknesses, hinges, materials, and also supports, as well load cases and load combinations, and also the loads. And the result import works by allowing us to start the calculation from Grasshopper and read the results from Orphan automatically back into Grasshopper, and then we can save them as a XML or a CSV file. The results can also, also the results also can be uh, further used, for example, to perform optimization calculations for various for various extensions in Grasshopper, like a geometry or section optimization. Yeah, that's for the short overview. So, what can the Grasshopper interface be used for in general? First of all, the Grasshopper interface is an alternative for the model generation. We use the plugin when we don't want to enter the model manually into Orphan, but we want to model algorithmically in Grasshopper or generate a structure with various tools in Grasshopper. Another strength is the ability for the parametric model generation, so that you can make parametric cha changes to your structure without much effort and without having the entire time consuming model adjustments, you don't have to adjust the model manually. Yeah, and this is useful for example for variant studies or op optimizing, optimizing structures in general. Yeah, and now we go, we go on going straight to Rhino and start Grasshopper. In Rhino, we have in Rhino we have this icon, and we, here we can start Grasshopper. If we start Grasshopper, we get a 2D script environment, and in this environment, we have different components we can put on. So, for example, we have components like this, where we have an input and an output, and we can connect these components to each other to create algorithms and build parametric models. And once the plugin is installed for Grasshopper, we see a global tab here, and there are three groups available in this global tab. We have a tab, uh, one group for the modal data, like member, section, material, surfaces, openings, and so on. And we have a second group for the load data, like load cases, node loads, support loads, also loads by themselves, and also design situations, static anal analysis, analysis settings, analysis settings, yeah. And in the third group, we have the export component, and other components related to the import. We only need the export component today, and I will go more into detail about this one at the end. And what's the plan for today? A little preview, what we going to do today. And we want to model a small structure, and then assign to this structure the model data and load data with the help of the Orphan link. And afterwards, we want to export model to Orphan. So we assign 
materials, sections, members, nodal supports, load cases, and loads. And we're gonna start today with the ge geometry in Grasshopper. So we start with a new project and we like to generate a grass girder. So I share the screen with Rhino so we can see how we generate the model in Grasshopper. And to do, if we start, we start with as we, we want to, as we're going to generate group two lines and the x-axis and between these two lines, we want to generate the grass. And first we start with a point. With a, first we create a construction point using this construction point component. And afterwards we want to copy this point by holding down the Alt key. Now we have generated two points. And for the second point, we want to set up a number slider for the X coordinate. So we can adjust the X coordinate with the slider. So we can double click on the canvas to generate a slider between zero, between zero and 15. Now we can connect it to the input of this construction point component. After that, we want to create a line between these two points. You see, this is the second point we created. And we want to create a line between these two points. And for this, we use the line component. You can click the canvas and write the name of the component, or you can also find the component in the curve tab and grab it from there. So we need a start point and end point in the input of this component. So we have these two points and now we can generate a line between these two points. Our next step is to copy the line with the move component. And here we have to, to input the geometry and the motion. The motion is by default set to 10 in the Z direction but we want to define it ourselves. And so we need at first the direction we want to move the line in. And also we can set up a range again with a number slider. So we want it to move from zero to five in this Z axis, Z axis. And if we connect it to our moved line, we see the second line appear here on the screen. And after this, we want to create or generate a grass between these two lines. And for this, we use the lunchbox in Grasshopper. And here we have different options to generate a structure. We want to generate a 2D truss between two curves. Our curves are now here the lines we're using. And between these two lines, we can generate this grass. And for this grass, we can set the number, a number slider for the divisions, uh, for the, that's the number of base we have in this grass girder. So we set up again a number slider and now we can control the number of divisions or the number of base in this in this truss girder. So that's our structure as an output of this generator we get different outputs. We have the primary lines that's the lines for our upper chord and our lower chord. We get the uh, lines for the diagonals and we get the uh, vertical lines and we also get th the points of our structure. So and that's, and we want to apply 
now the model data and the load data onto the structure. And yeah, for this we use this components from this global tab. And first thing we want to do is to define a material. And if we defining a material, we have yeah, two inputs. First input is the material number. This is the material index we gave the material in often. You can set it as number one. And the material name can be defined with a panel. So we can say we have this material name here and just put it in the component. But we want to use several materials for this example without, or just a possibility to use several materials without having to change the name every time in this component. So for this, we can create something like a material library. I copied this from another grasshopper file. And this is also just a simple panel with the material names inside we often use. And we can now use this index number and this list to define the material names and we're doing this with a other component, with the list item component. And with this component, we can retrieve a specific item from a list. And we can access the index number with, again, with a number slider. So we have here both material names. So we can write a number slider between zero and 12. And in the output, we receive now the corresponding material name. I will quickly show this. So now we can access every material name we defined in this list. Yes, and this will, oh, this was too much. And this will be the input for our material name. And that's all for the material. We have now defined the material. And after that, we want to define the section. So again, in the global tab, we have the section component for this. And the section definition is just like the material definition. So we can copy this here and set, we want to set two sections, one section for the upper a lower chord and one section for the diagonals and the vertical lines. So we have section number one and section number two. I predefine it here so we can copy it afterwards. And the section name is assigned like the material component, but we use here a different list. We use here a list for the uh, section names. So, and now we have to find one section. And we have, we can look at the input. Further the input, we have the material number. We have to assign the material number. And here we can take the material number from the material component and assign it to the section component. So we can transfer this number to this component. Uh, we have more inputs possibilities. For example, we can define the rotation, section rotation with an angle and also user-defined section values. Um, and if we want to copy, we want to define two sections, so I can copy this component and this will be all section number two. So let's set it to the APE 100, and here we set it to the HAR 100. If we have defined this section, we can define our members. And these are the members we will assign to the lines 
of our structure. And here it makes sense to have a separate member assignment for the upper court and the lower court because we only want to apply a load on the upper court and it will make easier later to distribute the load on this upper court if it's defined in a separate member. So the first input of a member component are the grasshopper lines from our structure. So let's look back at our structure, move it a little bit. We have lines for the upper and lower court. So we can, here we see a list with all, and here we see, a, we get a list with all lines for the upper court and lower court. And we want to remove the elements from the list. So we only get the lines for the upper court. This, and this we can do with a cal pattern component. And this component removes elements from a list using a specific rule. So first of all, we need to know which index numbers in this at this index assigned in this list assigned to the upper court, or which numbers represent the upper court. So we can look at the index number with the item list component. So we look at this list and can look on with a number slider at the different index numbers. So we see here the line with index number zero is line from the lower court. The line with the index one is the line from the upper court. Index two is again the lower court, three the upper court and so on. So we can set here a rule to remove always the first item from the list and keep the second item from the list and repeat this rule for the rest of the list. So we only get the lines for the upper court. Um, so we can set this, uh, realize this with this call pattern component we can set a rule in this component. So we can say we want to keep, we do not, as we do not want to keep the first element in the list. So we set this false for, for the first element. And then we ask, do we want to keep the second element in the list? We say yes, we set this to true. And after that, the rule will repeat itself for the entire list. And with this, we get only lines for the upper court. And now we can copy this component and invert the rule. So we get the lines for the lower court. And this allows us to separate the member assignment for the upper court and lower court. So we define to member components, and this will be our upper court member, and this will be our lower court member. And the next input in the member component is the member numbering. This is an optional setting, but it's optional setting, so the number assignment is done automatically in often depending on how we connect the components with the export component. But we need a numbering for the upper court because loads are assigned to this upper court members and the member component we use later requires member index numbers the load is assigned to. And for this we can make a simple list for our numbering like one, two, three, four, five, and so on. And now we can connect this list to our member component. The problem is that the number of lines we have here 
must match the count of the numbering we define in this list. So every time we modify the structure here, the number of lines also changed and we have to adjust this panel or this numbering in this list every time we modify the structure. So we need another solution for this problem. So we can generate a num the numbering differently with a series component. A series component create us a series of numbers and we can start the numbering with run and the number at step size for the numbering is also one. And the number of lines we have is equal to the number of trust base we define here. So we can connect this numbering to the count of our list. So we receive always the same, or always the correct numbering of the upper code lines. So we have here nine lines. So if we modify this truss, we always get, get the correct count for our members. So this will be our member numbering for the upper court. Um, so let's have a look at the um, member definition in quick and often. So I can introduce you to this component. Um, here we have an optional setting for the section distribution. It's by default set to uniform. And we can define this with a value list. You see here, you can define it with a value list. Value list is just a list where we connect it with the import and we get a list with the possible section distribution we can use. Here's also a comment that only uniform and linear are supported for now. So we only use this uniform and linear, but with this we can modified most sections we often use. And we if we don't put an input in this section, section distribution, we get as a default settings the uniform section distribution. And also we need to assign a section at the member start. It's also like an RFM. And we also have a possibility to assign a member rotation with an angel, with a help node or a surface. And for this, we have these inputs here. And the grasshopper component also allows us to define a hinges or eccentricities for the member. So the only Input we here need is the section start, so we can connect one defined section with our member. And with this, we have a completely defined member for the upper chord. For the lower chord, we use the same member. And here are we do not need a numbering because we do not want to link it any further with modal data or load data. So this, this will be assigned automatically in RFM afterwards. So we, we also assign a section start, a section at the member start. So we choose the same section. And for the diagonals and the vertical lines, we also generate a member. So we take this grass hopper lines, connect it to our member, and we take this grass hopper lines. Um, you can hold down the shift key if you want to put several information in one input. So we have here two, in, two informations for our grass for member input. Do I connect? Yes, okay, it's connected. Yeah, and 
the second section is for our uh, we define a different section we define this section for our upper code member and lower code member on for the verticals and diagonals we define a different section okay afterwards we going on with the support for our structure we can assign a nodal support a line support or a surface support the structure we need the nodal support so we want to define two nodal supports at the edge of the lower court and these points we also get from our structure and these are the construction points we use to generate the structure so we can easily assign these points by holding shift key to this nodal support component and the numbering we can also use num number of nodes as alternative to the grasshopper input but here we use just the grasshopper nodes next we defined uh, support conditions we have we can define a number uh, with a number we can define a spring uh, zero means three and when we use the expression inf we can define rigid support condition here we want to define a hinted support so we define the support conditions for hinged, hinged support and we want to prevent prevent the x x axis rotation and we have here some more inputs we can now look at this again in often so if we define a support we have here some optional settings for non-linearities for failure or for friction and we can define this friction coefficient also in grasshopper and we can set the rotation for the nodal support and here we have different direction types and we can set a rotation with one of these direction types rotated by ang angle or alignment on a member node or line but this input we don't need we do, don't doesn't need and don't need in this webinar so that's everything we need to define our nodal support And afterwards, we can go on with, with our load data. As the structure is so far finished, and now we can generate load cases and loads. At first, we define two load cases. For this, we lose, use this load case component. Here, we can assign a load case number we will generate two load cases so assign load case number one and number two to copy it afterwards we have load case name this we can define again with a, with a panel let's name it thermal and load for example let's make the panel a little bit smaller and just like in fm we first defined the defined the static analysis settings and the action category and we can look at this again in fm so it's easier to follow here we have if you generate load cases we have the analysis static analysis settings and for this settings we use a uh, separate component in grasshopper 
So as you can see, now you can see the static analysis settings. So here we have the option to give again a number and we have the possibility to set the analysis type like linear second order for all the analysis type for large deformations. And when using tension members, we have the possibility to activate this exceptional handling for failing members so that you don't get an unstable model due to tension members. Do you find this option here if the tension member is activated in the model? And also we can modify or have an optional input for the number of iterations and the number of load increments. And this is some input for the form finding, form finding iteration for the form finding add-on in RFM. So let's define this, this static anal analysis settings. First, we give it an index number, that's number one. The analysis setting are defined by the value list. So we can generate a value list and choose between the options we have here. The other inputs are not necessary for us. Now and now we can assign the static analysis setting to our load case. Now we're missing still the action category and the action category is a separate component in RFM, in Grasshopper. And this component allow us to find allow us to define a standard group and select like the EN ninety 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 and allows us to select the corresponding action category for this standard group. Here it is important to note that the standard must be also activated in RFM in the base data. So if you use the standard in Grasshopper, make sure you have the same standard active in your RFM file. So we can disconnect again our load case component. And here we have some more definitions for, or some options for self-weight adjustments with a factor and the direction of the self-weight. And for the first load case, the self-weight is automatically activated in often so we don't define or don't add input here. Mm, now we want to copy this load case. And set it to the load case number two and change the name to imposed load. And also adjust the action category to impose loads. So that's the definition for our load cases. And after the load case is defined, we want to apply the loads. We want to apply a nodal load on the nodes of the upper court. And we also want to apply a member load on the members of the upper court. The, lo the nodal load component, we can again define optional uh, index number for the load. We can assign the load case to this nodal load. So we have here one load case number one and load case number two. And here we first need to assign the nodes the load is assigned to. And for this, we have our structure where we find and the output a list with all nodes of our structure. And again, we want only, uh, we only need the nodes from the upper court. And with the point list component, we can easily see the numbering of our nodes. So 
So you can define the size of this point. So here you can see that we can display the numbering of the nodes directly in Rhino. And we want a load on all at not odd numbers here at the upper code. So the problem here is that often assigns a different node numbering than Rhino. Rhino starts the numbering with zero and often starts the numbering with one. So if we if we want to assign the node loads to the correct nodes in often, we need to define node numbering so that the numbering of the upper court nodes in often matches the numbers, the matches the numbering in Rhino. So that means we need we have this list of nodes and we want to extract the odd numbers from the list. This is possible again with the list item component where we take this list and we want to extract state the odd numbers from the list. And to do this we need a series component to create a series of numbers. This we use again the series component. And this series start again with the number one, number one. And the step size is now two, so we get all the odd numbers. And the output you see, we get the number one, three, five, seven, nine, eleven, and so on. And the value of the nodes we like to number. It's always this one, two, three, four, five nodes we like to number. And this value is always one more than the number of brass space we define. So we can again use this parametric number and add one to this number. So we can do a simple addition. And so we take then the number of the trust base and run to this, and this will be the count number for our nodes. Let's make some space here. So the series, you can com con connect the series component to our item component, and now we see we got only the odd numbers on nodes for the upper code. And these nodes should receive the same node numbers in often. And for this, we create a node component. And, for, and we, after this, we can say these grasshopper nodes receive the same node numbering in often and the num node numbering we defined in the series component. And these nodes are now assigned to, a, we can assign to our node load back here. So there are some other inputs we need to fill. We can look again at the new node, node load in often. So if we define a load in often, we have to we have to define the load type, the coordinate system we assigning to, and also the load direction. So that's the same in Grasshopper, so for example, we also can define different load types. And for this, we also have the further inputs for the load types definition for the parameters we use in often. So we need a normal force, so we only need one parameter here. Uh, if we start defining the load type, we see it's again a value list. 
So we can again define a value list for this. We define a simple force. The coordinate system is, we can referring to the local coordinate system with the expression local, or we can refer, refer to the global coordinate system with the number one. We're using the global coordinate system. And the load direction is again defined with a value list. So we can set the load direction in global Z direction. And at the end, we need to define force. Here is the force defined in Newton. So let's define 3000 Newton as our nodal force. So that's all for our nodal load. After that, now finally, we want to apply a member load on the members of the upper court. For this, we'll use the member component. Here we have, again, an optional input for the member load number. We assign our second low case to this member load. And the member index numbers the load is assigned to are already defined for our upper court. So we take them from our member component. So we have here a definition for our member numbering, and we can take this member numbering for our member load. The other inputs are, again, the same as in Orphan. We define a load type a load distribution coordinate system in load direction. Let's look at it. So when we insert a new member load in Orphan, the load type is set to force by default and the load distribution is set to uniform by default. And the same logic applies also to, the, to this grasshopper component. So if you don't give an input to this load type and load distribution, is it's assumed to be the default setting, and here it's the force and uniform setting. If we want something different, we can here use the value list to define other categories for the load type and load distribution. Um, here we see also different inputs for different load types. So depending on the load type we define, or depending on the load distribution we define, we have here the different parameters we need to access. And here you have the possibility to access most of them. Not all load types implemented. Uh, the most commons are available. So with this, we want to keep the input of the components or the input of the components remain manageable manageable if we don't add every single parameter to implement. And so the only thing we need to input here is the coordinate system. We refer again to the global coordinate system with the number one. You can Define a load direction again with a value list. The load direction we define as global Z in the true length. And we define the load magnitude again in Newton per meter. Let's say 2000 Newton. And with this, also the member component is ready, a member load component is ready, and now we want to export this data to Orphan. For this, we use this export component, and first we need, uh, first the export component must be connected to the defined data we, let's to the defined data, so we need an input for this component, what we defined 
also input for the model and the load data we defined. So we have the material, the sections we defined, the members we defined. Um, also the nodes here, our nodal support, the static analysis settings, our load cases, and finally also our loads. So um, we can run the export once with a button. For example, like yeah, with this button, we can run the export once with the button, or we can use a Boolean toggle. And with a Boolean toggle, we can create a live link between Grasshopper and Orphan. So we can set it off true, and the connection remains active between Grasshopper and Orphan. So if I adjust the parameters in Grasshopper, like here. If I adjust some pyramids in Grasshopper, the orphan model, model will be automatically updated as long as this Boolean toggle is set on true. As there are some other settings we need to, inputs we need to fill. So we want to override, override the model in orphan, and we also want to flip the Z axis. If we want to generate a new model in Orphan and don't override a model, we can also define a model name and a new model will be generated in Orphan. So let's look at the export in Orphan directly. Let's move Orphan on the screen so we can see the export. I will delay all data in this file here. And if we set the Boolean toggle on true, the export will be started. Okay, I forgot something. Maybe uh, we missing the lower code. So we can check if we connect the member of our export component. And why is the lower code missing? The member is missing for the lower code. Let me check this. Ah, okay, this is the lines for our lower code and we don't adjust them to our member, we got the wrong input here. So as you can see, we have a live link. So if we change here something, okay, we have the wrong assignment for the diagonals and the vertical lines. I will correct this fast, I can disconnect. This was connected to our upper code. You see if I work on this model, also the orphan model is updated. So here we have the lines for the diagonals. Set it in this input and see the update. And we have here the lines for the, vert the vertical lines. So now it should be correctly. Yeah. So we have now exported the model to Orphan. You can see the structure is exported, the supports are defined, the load cases are defined, load case one, load case two, and also the load is assigned. Now you can continue working with this model in Orphan, start the calculation, create load combinations or shaft analysis or design calculation.
Yes, and so that was the basic introduction into the Grasshopper Orphan interface. I thank you for your attention, and now I hand back over to Andreas. Okay, thank you, Paul, for this presentation. I would like to show you where you can find, uh, or where you will find the recording in the next days, and the Grasshopper file and Orphan file. I hand over the screen to mine, just a moment. Now, before I would like to show the website, just a small hint, if you want to book your free online appointment, such, a, such as a product demonstration or something like that, just contact our sales team with that link here, or you can scan the QR code. You can also get a non-binding offer from them yeah, if you want just contact them. You can also download the PowerPoint slide from our website. I will show you where you can find all. It's our website, global.com, and under news and events, you can find the webinars. That's today's webinar, and those are the future webinars, and you can also find the accomplished webinars yeah, we record all our webinars. So I click on that webinar from today. You will get an email in the next days with a link directly to that page. And then you can find the recording in the middle here. You can already find the presentation slides, the grasshopper file. And if you scroll down, you can yeah, download the RFM file. Okay, that's also all from my side. Thank you for your attention. Thanks to Paul for the presentation. Thanks to Lucas for answering the question or questions. I wish all a nice rest of the day. Maybe we meet each other in a future webinar. Bye bye.